I missed on the LaMelo thing, and I missed it as badly as I've missed in a long time. LaMelo's court vision and passing ability, I don't think is something you can't you teach you. I would make the argument LaMelo is LaMelo's a star, but LaMelo's swag is just off the charts. By, by the way, LaMelo Ball is so fun to watch. He is must-watch TV already. They know he's going to get everybody involved. He's leading this team. He's special. The journey of LaMelo Ball is one that has been well documented. As the most notable player in a wave of amateur athletes that have literally grown up under the spotlight of social media, he developed right before our eyes, transforming from the curly haired freshman that gained popularity in high school to a top NBA prospect. That being said, despite the familiarity of the youngest ball brother to the hoops world, many scouts didn't know what to think about him entering the 2020 NBA draft. Melo had taken one of the most unconventional routes ever seen to the NBA, raising questions about how well his talent would translate at the next level after foregoing the college route to play professionally in Lithuania and Australia. A 6 foot 8 point guard with elite playmaking skills and a creativity with the basketball that had made him a viral sensation, franchises quickly began moving ball up their draft boards, and come draft night had seen all they needed to. With the third pick in the 2020 NBA Draft, the Charlotte Hornets select LaMelo Ball from Chino Hills, California. LaMelo Ball goes third overall to Charlotte. Or so. I mean, things are going to happen fast. You're going to be in training camp in a couple of weeks. How ready are you? Are you jumping at the bench to do this thing? Uh, yeah, I mean, definitely ready. I mean, we haven't played basketball in a minute with the times we've been in. So, yeah, definitely ready to get on the court. While in most years, rookies have a couple months, including development games courtesy of the NBA Summer League, 2020 was completely different. A quick turnaround following the completion of the NBA's bubble season in Orlando meant that teams had to begin training camp by December 1st, a mere two weeks following the draft. LaMelo had found himself thrown straight into the action in Charlotte, being tasked with building chemistry with teammates and learning the offense of an NBA franchise in less than a month. Regardless, it didn't take long for his feel for the game and skill set to start to impress the Hornets coaches. LaMelo was a joy out there today. I mean, he's a, he's a sponge, he wants to get better. He's got a high basketball IQ. Uh, he's gonna pick up this system fairly quickly. Following a short two week preseason where LaMelo had looked comfortable and showcased the abilities that earned him a top selection in the draft, the regular season was right around the corner and it was time to see exactly what Melo was made of. After a crash course on playing at basketball's highest level, LaMelo Ball made his NBA debut on December 23rd, 2020. He struggled in the opening contest, failing to score a point and racking up three turnovers to go with three assists in limited minutes. Many questions were raised by fans and media alike, wondering why the Charlotte coaching staff had elected to play Ball in such a conservative role especially considering the fact that he had shown flashes of his potential during the brief preseason. After only averaging 17 minutes in his first three NBA games, only winning one, it was obvious he struggled to find a rhythm due to being pulled in and out of lineups. Leadership in Charlotte decided that a change needed to be made. The last game of 2020 would see Melo play almost 30 minutes, pouring in 22 points on 70% shooting and adding 8 boards and 5 assists. However, it wasn't the numbers that made the performance noteworthy. During the contest, Ball showed a confidence that had been lacking to begin the season, looking for a shot and knocking down 4 threes, more than he had made the first 3 games combined. In the 19 point blowout win, the team was noticeably more fluid. Everyone watching, including the coaching staff, could see that the Hornets were a different team with him running the show, and the change was made to increase Ball's minutes off the bench. Through his first 20 games, LaMelo would average 12 points, 6 assists, and 6 rebounds, but more importantly had completely changed the identity of the young Charlotte Hornets in the process. The greatest example of this came on January 9th where Melo compiled a stat line of 22 points, 11 assists, and 12 rebounds, becoming the youngest player to ever record a triple-double in an NBA game, a record his brother Lonzo had set just three years prior. All right, LaMelo standing by right now. Hey, LaMelo, congratulations. 
Congratulations, this is Eric and Dell up in the booth. A fantastic work, I'm sure you know, but your first NBA triple-double, how does it feel? Uh, I mean, it feels great, we got the win, so yeah, I'm feeling great right now. He just continuously gets better, and he's a special player. Uh, he's not phased by the moment. It's like he's been doing this for a number of years already, and uh, he was special tonight. Play, you know, playmaking, shot making, on the boards, uh, made the right decisions. He's a special player. Bringing his signature transition, running gun style, all the way from his high school days at Chino Hills, Ball dazzled audiences with full court outlet passes, creative fast break dimes, and highlight worthy buckets. Running the floor with one of the game's most athletic wings, Miles Bridges, they began to gain the reputation as one of the most exciting duos in the entire league. Lobs and smooth dishes from Ball to Bridges became a nightly appearance, bringing a buzz to the Spectrum Center that had been lacking in recent years. Despite still coming off the bench and having some inconsistent showings, Melo was drawing eyes to the franchise thanks to his massive social media following and was quickly becoming one of the most talked about players in the entire league. LaMelo's court vision and passing ability, I don't think it's something you can teach. teach. You can't he has, teach. And he has he shoots better. an extra part of his and, brain and, somewhere. And, we, yeah. and he shoots better than we thought he could. Yeah. And you watch and listen. Shoot 38% from three. As a rookie, do you see guys literally grabbing a rebound? Everyone is looking for LaMelo. Of course. What that reminds you of. Yeah, the great magic. point guards, magic, and people yeah. like that. They're looking. They're, they're grabbing the ball. Where's mm -hmm. Melo? Where's LaMelo? Where's LaMelo? They want him to lead the break right. because he's such a beautiful passer. Yeah. They know he's going to get everybody involved. He's leading this team. He's special. This kid is gifted beyond gifted. He, he, he's doing it effortlessly with a smile on his face like he's almost toying with right. the game. Don't hold him back. Give him the keys to the Benz. He's ready. He's a game changer. He's ready for the bright lights, and he will be a future superstar. Come on, coach. Give him the keys. On February 1st, the Hornets would announce that LaMelo had been named the starting point guard, officially handing the keys of the offense and the franchise Show over to the rookie. Ball would have increased success after earning the starting spot, playing freely and putting up some of the best numbers among rookies. During a Saturday night matchup against the Utah Jazz, Melo poured in a season-high 34 points and dropped 8 assists against one of the top teams in the Western Conference, showcasing an aggressive scoring mindset that was a welcoming sign for the Hornets. Just two games later, he hit a season-high 7 threes to go with 10 dimes in a 25-point win over the Rockets, continuing to grow his confidence not only from beyond the arc, but also in his own ability to leave his imprint on games. By the All-Star break, LaMelo was the only player over the past 60 years to lead all rookies in total points, assists, rebounds, and steals and his performances were drawing even more eyes to Charlotte. Over the course of the early part of the season, LaMelo had become must-see TV, producing highlight plays that would be circulating all over social media within minutes. Fans all over the league were taking notice of this play, and it seemed like Ball was a lock to win Rookie of the Year. But just as LaMelo had started making strides as a pro, an unforeseen circumstance would derail his entire season. Hornets down 17, and again, wonderful anticipation by LaMelo. And LaMelo, a hard dribble, hits the deck and will have free throws. I saw LaMelo trying to stretch out his right wrist. First free throw is short, second one was perfect. And he's still holding that right wrist. So there's one injury to another. You go from MVP candidate to a Rookie of the Year candidate. You reported that LaMelo Ball uh, could miss the season with a wrist injury. What else can you tell us right now about that situation? Yeah, it's really uh, it's really unfortunate. LaMelo Ball had been um, spectacular in this rookie season. I mean, he made the Hornets a team you wanted to watch every night. Uh, he's coming to New York. I'm told early this week, today, tomorrow, uh, to meet with uh, one of the top hand specialists, Michelle Carlson. Uh, but, but very likely, the expectation is he is done for this season. Ball's wrist fracture was a major roadblock in the progress he had made early in the year. After initial reports came out that the injury would require LaMelo to miss the rest of the season, questions were raised as to what it meant for the rest of the Hornets season. However, after undergoing a successful surgery and going through intense rehab, 
Ball would make a quicker than anticipated recovery, only missing 21 games throughout the entire healing process. Even in his absence, the Hornets had continued to embrace the highlight field play style that they had become known for, staying afloat in the Eastern Conference playoff race. LaMelo would not only be able to resume his chase for Rookie of the Year, but also contribute to Charlotte's race for the playoffs with only 10 games remaining. On May 1st, 2020, LaMelo would make his return from what was thought to be a season-ending injury, reclaiming his place in the starting lineup. While shaking off any signs of rust or fatigue, Ball was able to immediately pick up where he left off, and it was obvious that the Hornets were more than happy to see him back. LaMelo! Charlotte would win three of their next five games with Melo back at the helm, but the team's youth proved to be an obstacle over the final stretch. The Hornets would end the season on a five-game losing streak, four of those being by single digits, including a battle with LaMelo's big brother Lonzo and the Pelicans. This downward spiral to end the year meant Charlotte would have to compete against Indiana in the first round of the newly established play-in tournament. The Pacers proved to be too much for the inexperienced Hornets, resulting in a 27-point loss in the national televised game. Shooting just 4 for 14 with 4 turnovers, LaMelo would struggle in the final matchup of the year, ending a historic rookie season on a humbling note and giving motivation heading into the offseason. After an impressive first season in the NBA, one that was filled with big plays and crowd-raising moments, on June 16th, 2021, the league announced LaMelo had earned the highest honor any rookie could ask for. Y'all, this is Miles Bridges. My boy Melo just won Rookie of the Year, but he don't know it yet. Watch this. Nice, ain't it? Uh -huh. They ain't wanna let me take nothing home. You not even looking, gang. Man, year, man. Year, bro. Congrats, bro. Yeah. You already know it's on the show, bro. Heavy. Well done by Miles Bridges, and there is your 19-year-old Kia NBA Rookie of the Year, right. Lamelo Ball. Congratulations. Right now, Thank you, man. Thank you. Although at one point in the season it had seemed like Ball had lost his spot as the front runner. Becoming the NBA's Rookie of the Year meant Melo was in some elite company, as many of the game's top former and current players have taken home that honor. As the first player from Charlotte to win the award in over 16 years, LaMelo averaged 15.7 points, 6 assists, and 5.9 rebounds per game, with his scoring average jumping to 18 points per game as a starter. He had addressed many of the initial concerns the teams had for him entering the draft, shooting an above average 35% from three, and being able to create for teammates at an elite level, despite facing NBA defenders. He now turns his attention to a new focus, improving his game even further, and helping lead the Hornets next season to their first playoff berth since 2016. LaMelo Ball's 2021 rookie campaign was one of the most exciting aspects of the entire regular season, embodying everything that makes the game enjoyable. In a way that we haven't seen since the likes of a young Jason Williams running the floor in Sacramento, Melo completely captured the attention and imagination of fans all across the globe, keeping everyone tuned in on the edge of their seat. Like watching an artist at work, LaMelo used his creativity to orchestrate plays that had never been seen before. In his first year, he was able to completely change the direction of a franchise, thanks to both his on-court play style and off-court popularity. Many within Charlotte's organization saw their careers thrust into the national spotlight, from the previously underappreciated Miles Bridges to even the play-by-play -play announcer, all thanks to the increased attention drawn by Ball. That being said, there's no doubt that there are still questions left to be answered. LaMelo has certain aspects of his game that need to grow in order to lead the Hornets to the next level competitively, with room to improve as any rookie requires. But in the meantime, 
It's clear that through all of the highlight plays and broken records, Charlotte has found their franchise centerpiece for years to come. The NBA's Rookie of the Year has a bright future on basketball's biggest stage. And who knows, maybe someday he'll be the centerpiece of that too. What's going on y'all? This is Trice here. I want to thank you for watching this video. Thank you for your constant support. Don't forget to drop a like, leave feedback in the comment section below, and subscribe for more content. Remember to turn on your post notifications so you don't miss any new videos as soon as they hit YouTube.